Hello everybody, it's me the Boss Hog and we're going to look at my buy, sells and dividends as of the week ending the 20th. Uh, usually I try and keep this a little bit cryptic but I thought I'd just come straight out. Um, no surprises this week. I've got a new stock, we're going to talk about Home Depot in a few minutes. Uh, but let's go through the uh, normal stuff first before we get there. All right, so uh, the roller coaster continues. Uh, whereas last week I was like relatively happy with how I finished, uh, this week even though it was basically the same, you know, minus 0.3%, even less, uh, this one was really annoying because I felt like I was going to be pretty green. I was just basically waiting for the US markets to open on Friday. And for whatever reason, the Americans didn't join in on the, uh, you know, the exuberance of Asia and Europe. Uh, so funnily enough, I actually finished, you know, zero uh, for P&L from my US shares on Friday. Uh, and overall, that meant that my uh, my profit for the week was uh, minus 317. So a little bit disappointed just because it was like the other way around, whereas like, I felt like I almost escaped a much bigger loss last week. This week, I was like, finally, a green week. And then, yeah, the, uh, the Americans just didn't turn up on Friday. Uh, broadly speaking, though, I feel absolutely fine. Um, there was some good movement, actually, in some of my real conviction plays we'll get to in a second. And again, by now, I'm either so numb or resilient to it that uh, broadly, I feel absolutely fine. And, you know, now that we're two thirds of the way through the month, I'm actually looking forward to the end of the month when I get paid and we can add a bit more. Uh, speaking of adding a bit more, I wasn't really expecting to add some more money this week, but managed to just about scrape together uh, £800. Uh, as a reminder, you know, we've got two savings accounts, ISA specifically. Um, so, you know, we have like a £40,000 a year maximum and the target is to max them out. Basically, they're so tax efficient and important for, you know, early retirement in the UK. that That's the uh, that's the target. So still two weeks ahead uh, from that. Uh, not a huge amount of trading this week, certainly compared to the last three weeks where I've been trading 10% you know, of my portfolio a week. Uh, this time I just trimmed one of my larger positions to free up some money for Home Depot. Um, we'll get to that in a second. And last but not least, uh, another good dividend week. Uh, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that both May and June are pretty big uh, dividend months for me. Uh, that's because I have been pretty overweight with UK stocks and a lot of UK stocks uh, pay twice a year, including you know this uh, time frame basically. So uh, I was expecting Games Workshop this week. It's another three figure dividend for me, two or three this month. Um, and Aviva was a bit of a surprise because I wasn't really expecting to get paid until next week, um, just because normally trading two on two, my brokerage is a bit slow. Uh, however, credit to them, they were pretty quick this week. So I got paid on Friday. So uh, a pretty good dividend week actually as well. Uh, anyway, let's move on to the buys. All right, so not a huge list here, and you can see it's pretty top heavy by Home Depot. Um, I will just talk about Kanos as well in a second. Uh, the rest of the other ones here are more or less me DCAing or using some dividends or etc. I feel like I've already spoken about them or they'll be very familiar to most people. Um, so I'll start with Home Depot anyway. So I didn't really expect to get a position in an American retailer. If I'm honest, I was talking to somebody about Walmart and, you know, like I was reading up on Walmart as a result of their, you know, results and their share price crash. And to be honest with you, I'm very bearish on Walmart anyway, for various reasons. And none of my research changed that. Target, likewise, you know, I looked at the likes of Costco as well, which I think is a quality operator, but too expensive at current levels. I need about 350 for that personally. Uh, but then I stumbled across Home Depot. And, um, you know, I saw it on another YouTube video as well, in fairness. And the more I read into it, the more I liked it. I think it's better than Lowe's. First of all, I think it's important to get that out there. It is more expensive, but I think it's deservedly so. And I think kind of the the quality against the cost just is slightly in actually quite materially in Home Depot's favor. Um, it, you know, it increased guidance uh, it all, and, and it all beat comparables last year despite having really tough comparables. Uh, margins are growing. Although their sort of footfall to their shops decreased by about 8%, right, really significant, because they've been so successful in their pro market, um, you know, and basically higher average spend, uh, you know, their revenue and their earnings have been going up, which is extremely impressive, in my opinion. And I think they're really benefiting from their customer split being sort of half and half between individuals and pro, whereas the likes of Lowe's is like one quarter, even closer to one fifth, and then um, pro. And then the rest individuals. So like where you've seen the the resiliency of the professional scene, basically, that's really put a good floor on HD. I think it's got a solid dividend. I even like its kind of ethos. Right? Like, um, they raise a lot of money for like veterans charities. My dad was in the army. I went to an army school. I've always had a bit of a soft spot for military stuff. So even, even I even found that kind of quite admirable. 
Uh, I accidentally went on their AGM call as well, which was uh, interesting. Uh, I, I thought it was an earnings call, but it was an AGM. Anyway, I, I turned up, um, so I listened in. And, you know, I think their strategy is exactly right, the way they're expanding. Um, it was interesting to hear them talk about how they view their total addressable market, meaning where they've only got like about a sixth of their overall market. Uh, and the way that they're going to uh, look to build on that as well. So I just view this business as basically being extremely seemingly well run, the right ethos in a way, I kind of want to support that. I think it's also benefiting um, from, you know, customer movements. I think it's got itself a bit of a moat, if that's quite right. I mean, it's basically like leading in its markets, um, you know, and it, it is apparently the trusted place where professionals go and spend very serious money. I wouldn't say this is exactly a bargain. Um, I got my shares uh, an average of 287.01, uh, then converted into pounds there in the table. So I wouldn't say that is a bargain. Like there, under, there are, you know, under 10 PE, very good companies out there at the moment, and this isn't one of those. Uh, but to me, it kind of goes back to that sort of, this is a quality company at a reasonable price. Uh, I qualify for the dividends as well. So that's basically another percent discount because, you know, $2 a share, 190. Uh, so that, that just feels good as well. Um, and yeah, so I, I am actually looking to add to this position, probably another five shares over the next couple of months, just to sort of go in and build sort of a slightly more material position, probably about 2% of my portfolio is the aim. And yeah, what, what, what else can I say? I mean, I, I just liked what I was seeing, basically. Everything seems very solid, um, better than solid. You know, they upped guidance. They had a huge dividend increase as well very recently. So I just, it, it seems like a good mix between like a very stable, secure business outperforming retail peers, you know, in general, as well as, you know, Lowe's specifically. Um, and I just felt like it was a good balance of everything. So I, I'm in the process at the moment of sort of de-risking my portfolio a little bit. I got burnt with Russian miners. Uh, so that that left a nasty uh, feeling. And, you know, like in the, uh, th this is all kind of gearing up for that, basically. So although I think Lowe's offers a better value play, especially if you believe that, you know, everything I spoke about might not materialize or Maybe uh, professionals will start to fall off a cliff soon as well. That could mean that, you know, I'm overpaying for HD. As it stands, however, I like what I'm seeing with Home Depot. And I just think it's a good, uh, a good company at a reasonable price. So that's the focus there. Next up is Kanos. So <laughs> this is pretty interesting. It's been, it's been under a lot of pressure over the last, I don't know, six months, really. Uh, so first of all, it's like a growth play. It's a very small company, right? This is like verging on penny cap territory. It is in the FTSE 250, but toward the bottom end of it. But, you know, it has like a billion pound market cap, give or take. Um, however, it's extremely profitable already. And it's in kind of the growth sector. It basically does like IT digital transformation, which I know is a little bit of a buzzword, but it's, it basically has built itself a, um, a very good reputation. It's kind of does end to end stuff within its um, within its development. So, you know, half of its business is generic IT software development, et cetera, and improvement. But it also does things like testing, um, you know, uh, project management, onboarding, et cetera. So it kind of picks up everything, right? It's like a one stop shop. Uh, the other thing it does specifically is the workday practice suite, where it has a lot of like very cool integration and improvement on that software. Uh, so yeah, I just, I like what I'm reading. Uh, it's been under pressure, not just because of growth stocks have been under a lot of pressure, <laughs> Um, but because it got a really hefty downgrade from Berenberg, the German um, investment bank, uh, from, you know, like 2100 to 1200, which was just ridiculous. And, I, you know, I read their, um, their notes for it, basically highlighting that maybe margins are going to be under a bit of pressure. Maybe they'll be locked into long term contracts and won't be able to pass them on. And it just it was difficult for me to understand how that would justify a kind of such a massive downgrade. Right. Like, OK, maybe it's worth only 1800p if you really believe that. But even then, they were like very wishy-washy, really. So I don't really know where it came from. And to me, it just it seems like, um, again, it, it's not exactly cheap. It's like a just under a 30 PE. Um, and also, I'm buying this just before the earnings. Uh, but again, I am I think at the moment, there's enough safety margin in here. You know, picking this up for 1080 feels really good. For me, anything under 14 is a reasonable buy. Uh, I think anything under 13 is good. Uh, so my average here is 12 and a half at the moment. So I'm definitely still uh, still pretty red on this. Uh, but again, it's a relatively small cap, uh, for, especially for a FTSE 250. And um, I think in a few years time, let's say by 2030, uh, this has every possibility of being a member of the FTSE 100 if it doesn't get snapped up by a large competitor, which is also very possible. For me, however, it's, it pays a dividend. It's extremely profitable. Uh, it's extremely efficient. If you look at it, it's like return on equity and things. 
Um, and again, it seems like a, a really good little uh, development company. So we'll see what Monday brings. I could have egg on my face, you know, next week when it turns out that Berenberg were absolutely right and it just gets destroyed. Um, for me, um, you know, I'm, I, I guess I want to hold um, my my rough price here, but you know, I, I'd want to be seeing sort of an 18 pounds that kind of level, assuming sort of in line with historic norms, earnings growth, and things like that. So I think I'm picking up. Uh, Again, another quality company, uh, a, actually, in this case, a pretty good price, in my opinion. Uh, maybe there are bigger discounts out there. But again, I think this is a really great long term hold for me. And um, again, we're buying quality at this uh, this moment in time. So I decided to buy some more. Yeah. So uh, those are my buys this week. Anyway, if I've, you know, you want to talk about Amcor or something, feel free. But I feel like I've spoken about them before. So uh, anyway, let's move on to the sales. All right, so also uh, two that I just want to talk about in terms of my sales. The first one here is Phoenix. Um, this company I've been buying, and I think uh, my target price here of 720 has been unchanged for a little while. So selling out 622, nothing major here. It's just um, a little bit of kind of diversification. Um, also as well, I've been very successful in bringing my Phoenix group uh, average down. So it was 646, now it's 620. So a tiny profit here on this sale. Um, but another thing to consider here is that in a couple of months when my wife starts her private equity job and I have, you know, I have to be a bit more careful in terms of trading, uh, I am allowed to drip without any issues. So my thinking here is that I'm diversifying and to be fair, in another year's time, I'm going to have another 200 shares in Phoenix just because of the, you know, the drip and the fact that this is like, you know, an eight and a bit percent. Uh, yield at the moment. So I just decided that actually, although I still am very strong on Phoenix, I still think this is both good income play um, as well as a defensive stock, as well as some modest but not insignificant upside. Um, again, I did like what I was seeing with Home Depot and I just wanted to open up a position at what I felt was a reasonable price for Home Depot. So uh, I can understand why this might be slightly controversial. Um, and yeah, that, that's basically it. So again, I still do expect to take a big position into Phoenix Group. Uh, they have their dividend in about three months time. that will be very significant for me uh, with my holding. I still have 1800 shares. Uh, but yeah, that, that's my thinking here, basically, that I'm just going to be adding to Phoenix in the long term anyway, when I'm more restricted on my trades. And, you know, before that happens in July, um, I want to kind of, you know, diversify my portfolio a little bit, uh, make sure I'm happy with all my holdings and that led to this. So, you know, I basically put about 90% of this sale into uh, Home Depot to get my five shares. And then the leftover went into Google, uh, which I think is one of the best uh, risk reward plays at the moment, to be honest with you, I'm probably going to be buying more Google uh, in the near term. And next up, uh, Vici, Vicky, Wiki, however we're pronouncing it. Um, I decided to exit this. Um, I never really got to a stage where I was happy with like a big stake in this. And I, I only wanted to really buy it underneath 28. You know, I think there are some concerns about this, although I think it's a little bit overblown. It's a re it's got a lot of like recent history as well. Um, sorry, I mean, you know, it's a very recent, uh, recently developed company. And, you know, I, I just I guess I wanted a bit more of a safety margin. I was really able to get, although it has traded underneath this level. I just never had like the funds available or everything else was red. I didn't want to sell anything. I didn't have any you know new capital to add. And because of the fact I'm like reviewing my portfolio at the moment, you know, I really only want to have positions in companies that have at least a percent in uh, just to make it worth my while to follow them. And I had one share in Vicky and I just I just decided to bail. Basically, um, I don't think realistically I'm going to be able to build up any worthwhile stake here. Um, I, I kind of feel OK with it. Um, you know, if, I, if it turns out this company goes to like, you know, mid to low 30s, which I think is feasible, then fine. Um, but I think there's money elsewhere. I do have a material holding in MPW as my sole remaining REIT at the moment, just because I think that is good value uh, and a bit safer. Um, but I think that's probably going to end up it in terms of my REIT, unless I really spot bargain before then. Uh, so yeah, here, I, I like the idea of Vicky. I like to play poker. I like Vegas. Uh, I'm quite actually pro gambling in, in a weird way. Um, but I just uh, it just didn't seem to be. And I guess I'm somewhat fatalistic about that fact. Like if it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. Uh, so, yeah, I just decided to close the position, uh, take a, a small profit. I did have um, a few more shares in Vicky not so long ago and took, you know, I, I think like a seven, eight percent um, return. Uh, so it's it's all OK, basically. But that was my reason for selling. Just so just those two sales, not huge trading week this week. Uh, but let's have a look at my top 10 and some news on a couple of them. 
All right, so I guess finally, it looks like Gamma might have found the bottom. Uh, it has been on a really, in my opinion, unjustified slide. Maybe it was slightly expensive a year ago, you know, when it crept up to like the £26. I would say that was a little bit overdone. Um, but it's a really high quality company. This for me is the stereotypical textbook dividend growth company, um, you know, has a progressive dividend policy. It's extremely high quality. Again, look at the um, efficiency metrics on this company. Uh, expanding in all the right areas, in my opinion, built an incredibly good and scalable solution. Um, and, you know, this is a company that historically has traded at 25 PE, um, actually close to 30 in many of the years. And in my opinion, has actually improved over the last few years. Uh, so, you know, I, I think it's very easy to sort of extrapolate sort of earnings last year or earnings this year, multiply it by 25 to get a, you know, a, a kind of prudent number. Um, and then, you know, 30 if you want to be a bit ambitious. Um, but, you know, it was interesting to read um, JP Morgan reiterates his buy target of 2150. For me, my range is about 1900 to 2400. So that feels, I mean, literally bang in the middle. Uh, I, I think it's a very, um, it looks a bit crazy, right? Because this company is like 12 pounds something at the moment. Uh, but again, I don't really know why it's been beaten up so badly, to be honest with you. Uh, and it's my largest company for a reason. Uh, I am pretty red on this. I probably jumped into it too quick, but I just, I guess I'm surprised at how much it's actually slid and I was keen to build a position. So I'm still about 20% red in this. Um, but again, I'm super optimistic about this as a long-term hold and I will be getting a dividend from it, quite a big one actually, uh, in a couple of months. So that will feel uh, very good. Um, but yeah, trading update here uh, at the top end of expectations. So I'm expecting something like 75p um, EPS this year. Um, before any adjustments so they, they are doing acquisitions and stuff so i think that will have an impact um so let's keep it before we get into any adjusted um the guidance at the moment is something like 68 to 77 uh so yeah I, I, I that's i think you know depending on what the adjustments look like it could even be 80 and again if you then just take you know let's say 75 and multiply that by 20 you'll have a pretty good return if it's 25 you'll have a great return 30 you'll have an even better one right so i think it's I think it deserves these kind of multiples. I, I know it, it might look expensive, especially in this market, um, well, to be talking about those kind of earning multiples. Uh, but again, it's an incredibly resilient stock that is operating in all the right areas. So yeah, and, and at the moment, I don't think it does look expensive at 12 pounds and you know, 75 PEPS. I think that's a really good um, ratio for such a high quality company. Uh, so yeah, it's it's actually quite significant in my largest holding. I've got about 16 and a half percent in it. Phoenix is about 12 percent, so quite a big jump actually between first and second. Uh, Phoenix, there was a um, Motley Fool article highlighting it as a good income play. <laughs> like I say this every week, um, I think it is gradually being noticed. Um, you know, again, it's a pretty, it's in the middle almost of the FTSE 100. It's not a small company anymore. It's, it's kind of grown over its last couple of acquisitions um, to actually be a relatively serious player. Uh, some questions about how well it kind of gets off its legacy life assurance business, where its margins are very small. Uh, although, again, even there it's profitable. Um, but it, I think it's made some smart acquisitions and built a very good sort of wealth management uh, part of its business as well. So we like this as, as a primarily an income and defensive play, despite the fact, obviously, I trimmed a little bit. Uh, I still remain of the opinion that it's a good place to put your money. Uh, especially if you're an income investor at the moment, or again, you want a little bit of safety as well. I think this is one of the best choices out there. Uh, no update from Games Workshop. They do have their year end in uh, 31st of May, I think. That'd be interesting. Uh, Amcor. <clears throat> so we do have quite a large holding in Amcor. Um, I did add very modestly to it this week. There's a really good article. Um, and again, the links are in the uh, video description, uh, basically just highlighting the, uh, I think it's seven, uh, cheap semiconductor stocks. I think it's a good read for anyone not familiar. I have Amcor and Micron who are both in this uh, article. Um, I think it's well worth a read basically. These are, <laughs> all of them are to one degree or another, profitable, growing, um, et cetera, et cetera. So for me, I actually really like the semi space at the moment. And I'd like to be adding both to Micron and Amcor uh, as well as potentially opening up another position. Oh, and I do also have ASML, which isn't on that article and it's expensive, uh, but hopefully, uh, deserves to be. <clears throat> uh, nothing genius, nothing from Hollywood Bowl. <clears throat> there was a Seeking Alpha article about hunting the bank shares. Wasn't the most glowing article, to be honest, I'm not going to lie. Um, and it's interesting for me because I talk about finding it difficult to place Huntington because it sort of ticks a lot of boxes. Their argument was it's primarily, primarily a uh, income potential uh, yielding, you know, about 5% now. So pretty big by S&P 500 standards. 
their argument was is that it's still going through lots of integrations eps is going to be mooted for a few years etc etc i think it's a, not an unreasonable point <clears throat> their belief was slightly more modest than uh, wall street consensus as they were saying uh, because yeah if you look at analyst averages at the moment they predict sort of 30 percent upside uh, i have a 17 dollar target on this myself which is probably about the same actually a 30 percent upside um but for me i'm sort of insulated with that dividend yield there is some risk with this as well obviously like you know if you if you think the midwestern economy is about to tank it's going to be a problem um because you know the, although this is a large bank it's still regional so it's not without risk i would say uh, but i'm pretty happy with my position i've got about three and a half percent of my portfolio in it and i think it's about the right size uh, so i'm not looking to add a huge amount anymore to h band but you know at under 14 for me is a buy um, and you know at the moment it, occasionally it's been going under 13 so i might add just a little bit just to get my average down a little bit more but yeah i'm happy i think um, i understand this company quite well and again i like the areas that they're moving into as well an update from huntsman uh, legal in general <laughs> it's quite an interesting article again from motley fool described it as a no-brainer um i commented before i think it was last week actually that if you could only pick one uk listed company to own forever um i think legal in general would be a good choice uh, or it should at least be in that conversation was i think what i said um it has an, an, a very good yield uh, a low pe and an extremely diverse profitable well-run business um you can class it as a more of an investment um you know fund manager rather than as an insurer but again it does a little bit of everything it's a very good um financial services play uh could arguably be a uk proxy or an insurance proxy or again it's one of the largest asset managers in the uk i think only behind blackrock was uh, something i was reading uh so you know again it's a biggie that can go under the radar especially if you're not a uk uh, holder um but I like it. And again, I'm hoping here to actually uh, add to my stake in the long run. This, this is gonna be a core component, I think, almost forever. Uh, but again, I try not to use that word because there'll be a price that I'll sell anything at. Uh, so uh, fine. And Disney here uh, still continues to dip. No new news worth reporting. Uh, everyone's got their own opinions about it. My opinion is basically Q2 was disappointing from an earnings perspective, and I'm gonna wait till Q3 clarifies it. In defense, one of the things I was reading was that Disney themselves expect H2 to pick up steam as a combination of their parks no longer having any restrictions, uh, as well as um, more releases that should attract uh, streaming um, again. But that's going to depend, you know, how what those uh, average revenue numbers look like uh, in terms of how it translates into their earning. But for me, although I'm not actively looking to buy much Disney at the moment, unless it goes, you know, reasonably down into two digit territories, uh, I'm, I, I still think it's a good long-term safe hold because of the power of the mouse and, um, you know, therefore I'm holding, uh, but it'll be interesting to see what this looks like in Q3. I definitely have my conviction dented a little bit, uh, so we're holding off for now. Anyway, buy, sells, and top 10 this week. Any questions, let me know in the uh, comments below. I've been the Boss Hog. Thanks very much for watching, everyone, and good luck with your investing. Bye for now.